the home of because no one else actually does it. So yeah, this is the only place you will see Warzone and MotoGP mixed together. Uh, today, obviously, it's been a really tough 24 hours for motorbike racing. Um, the really sad news that Hugo Milan, a uh, 14-year-old Spanish rider, has uh, tragically lost his life. Um, is something that you never want to hear. <sighs> never want to hear at all. Um, if you haven't seen the crash then please don't um it quite honestly is one of the most horrific accidents i have seen in a long time um i didn't go search if it was on one of the news sites that i was was reading about it and um quite frankly it was uh, horrific and it does make you uh, question motorbike and motorbike riding to be quite honest um horrific absolutely horrific and my heart goes out to him everyone he knows friends family um team everything um so yeah and in the british superbikes we obviously had brad jones who is in a induced coma after a crash in race one yesterday um i've not heard anything else i don't think we're going to get any updates for another sort of 24 hours or so um but he is in an induced coma he's got head and um several hundred other injuries so yeah again yeah heart goes out to everybody who knows him um fingers crossed he will uh pull through um but yeah, it's not been a not been a particularly happy twenty four hours. Um, so yeah, just wanted to kind of say that. Really, um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, MotoGP because it has been like, three weekends now. Um, I've missed two weeks, one for a holiday um, and one just yeah. I didn't didn't feel up for it last um, last week at all. Um, so you know, just gonna wanted to kind of get back onto the horse. Uh, we're going to talk about Yamaha, Ducati and Honda, uh, the first sort of opening half of the season to to see what, um, to, to, to see how they've done and, and kind of my thoughts on um, how they've done, how they've adapted to 2021 and uh, what's coming up for them in the, in the second half of the year and what their kind of aim should be really. Um, I haven't really prepared anything for this stream, so um, yeah bear with me i just wanted to kind of get on and, and have, a, have a talk about it really so if you're in the chat now then please uh get involved um, as much as possible um it's great to sort of chat um get questions coming in and i can kind of give my views etc and, and to hear, hear about your views as well so um give us a minute or two i'll just set up the stream and um we will be right back the proper warm-up. We'll be deploying soon.
Gas is approaching your position. Move to the safe zone. Right now, let's uh, on go for Get the ready. first drop. Um, if you do know me, uh, I'm point UK. Um, I've started streaming in the last couple of months. Uh, talking about MotoGP, I have previously streamed a little bit of Blackout, etc. Um, but to be quite frank, oh, we've got somebody going in here. That's good, they're going down there. Um, I am not the best player. That was then. Uh, but I'm, I'm alright. So, yeah, don't expect any 30 kill uh, bangers. But, you know, you never know. You could get a win. I've got 32 wins currently. Um, so yeah, just, you know, come along, let's talk about a GP, let's try and get a few gameplays and have a bit of, have a bit of fun, because uh, quite frankly, let's try and get up here. The movement, the movement, can you see the movement? Um, to be quite frank, it is a bit, yeah, it is a bit boring at the moment. Uh, and there's not, yeah, there's not much kind of going on. Oh, yeah, good shout. Um, so yeah, it's nice to kind of uh, sort of top a bit of Moto GP uh, and um, get rid of the dust. Ready for the next race, which is in a couple of weeks' time. Um, so yeah, war zone at the moment. I had a I had a week uh, off because I was away uh, with the family and away from my day job as well. Um, so I had a nice week off. That door's open. Maybe there's someone around it. Okay, that's him. First kill out the way, which is nice. Oh, okay. No one else around here. I've got 12 grand, which is nice. Uh, yeah, so... Oh, that's me. I had a, a week off. Bit of time off with the family. Friendly loadout drop on the way. You're losing ground. Enemy launched an advanced UAV. We're exposed. Watch out! I'm going to be okay. Well, I don't know how I got out of that. But we did. And we killed a right shoulder. Um, right. Start with this one. Um, and I came back after a week off and I thought, as usual, you know, it'd be quite tough going. But I came back and got a win on the first day, and then I went on the second day, so up to 30. I've not opened chests and stuff around here.
much noticed I was um, up the stream playing behind then. Uh, I might just stay here and just see if it comes back for this. I'm a bit concerned about the riot shield, are they? That's the only trouble. Um, yeah, I've got. I came back and, and won twice quite quickly, so I was quite, you know, <laughs> amazed. And I think my KD was about. I thought it was about 3.3 um, or something ridiculous. So um, I had a, had a cu couple of days Enemy back. It's still there, so he's in the gulag. Hmm, might just, just wait and see. If I was him, I'd be landing probably slightly away from it. Enemy UAV overhead. And then kind of coming back in. Enemy UAV overhead. It's definitely still around. Hmm. Maybe we. It's likely it's going to come back now for it. Um, oh. Jesus. It's gonna be on my left somewhere then. Enemy UAV overhead. Requesting area recon. Loadout drop on the way. Somebody else there anyway. Enemy UAV overhead. Whoa. <laughs> Killed myself. Jeez. How did he know I was there? I forgot I didn't have a bloody gas mask. Damn it. Um, so yeah, at the moment I'm trying to level up the AK-47 and the SCAR. I just, as you saw there, the, the, the AK-47 seemed absolutely bang on. Um, I tried the Amazon 4 earlier and it just didn't have that kind of... didn't have that... The recoil was just too much, in my opinion. But if you lose, you're done. Sort them out or capture the objective. I think it's all in there. Oh. Your kicked in that one. We're sending wow. you back to base. The enemy took that one. We'll be back to finish the job. <coughs> Hit fire. Excellent. So, not a bad start, to be fair, but that gulag was pretty rubbish. Um. So yeah, I tried the XM4, it didn't really work, um, the recoil on it just seems crazy compared to the Farah. Uh, the C58's obviously been nerfed with the, four, uh, the 3X now, sorry, the 4X. Um, so yeah, a lot of the really good um, assault rifles have become slightly bouncy, um, but that AK did seem pretty straight and true to be fair, so yeah, it'd be interesting, I might open that up again and um, try the pkm as well um which is it is a really really good gun uh, but i think it got a slight buff as well in the last update um so yeah that's what we're we're trying to do um 32 wins for trying to get some more but you know just going around and trying to kill as many people as possible um because that's what i enjoy um don't like camping and don't like campers so yeah hopefully we'll um have as little of them as possible.
Um, so yeah, just like I said, haven't done a huge, well, haven't done much uh, preparation at all um, on today's sort of topic, but obviously I watch MotoGP every day. I'm kind of lucky, well, every day, every every race. Um, I'm always kind of looking at what the kind of comings and goings are. Um, I do look at the tech kind of um, pieces on Facebook and a bit on Crash. And um, the journalist I do follow a lot is Matt Oaksley as well. Um, he's really, really good um, for, for some of the tech, etc. Um, and yeah, just wanted to kind of talk about um, 2021 so far, the factories, um, how people will. And yeah, just sort of go through the three factories, um, Yamaha, Honda, and Ducati, and kind of go through how they'd be looking at it. You know, first half of the year, obviously already down. Um, what their expectations might have been coming in, what have kind of has happened, and then what would they be thinking now, and what would they be expecting in the second half of the year? Um, so, I mean, huh, probably the easiest one so and the most simple one is Ducati um, what would they be wanting this year I think they would have been wanting a solid start to the year um, I think they would have thought that they'd improved the bike in a lot of areas um, but with their Sort of factory lineup of Bagnaia and Miller probably thought that it was a bit too. Um, Clear to engage, all A bit too early to be expecting to go for wins, but actually, you know, it should be towards the sharp end. range guns at the moment so that'll do that'll do Where's the gun? Gone to a swim. <laughs> Won't be surprised if he turned up up there.
Doesn't look like he is going to. Okay. Pretty sure I heard a loadout drop down here as well. Keeps that. Gas is closing in. Hmm, don't trust it. Enemy UAV overhead. Enemy UAV overhead. What I gone ghost off the rip. Might have gone ghost off the rip. Definitely a loadout gone down. Got guns there. We've got a loadout drop inbound. So you can get this. Yes. So yeah, I just wanted to sort of send you. Ducati is, um, yeah. Potentially the easiest. Um, I mean, I personally think that Ducati will be hugely happy with um, how it's gone. They've obviously re signed both riders as well. Um, which kind of gives you a good indication that they're quite happy with them. Uh, okay, just try and get on the smooth. Um, but they probably didn't expect Zarco to be kind of up there and um, getting in the sort of title mix as well. Which, you know, from a map Ducati's point of view, they would be very happy with the work so far. Anybody there? Hopefully, no one's ghosted and sitting at the top of here. Whoa. Enemy UAV overhead. I'm going to be okay. Don't know where that came from. Oh, no, I'm assuming he's ghosted. Oh. Wow. That was interesting. And he has come up. Yeah, this AK-47, <laughs> if you're not using it, get on it. Now, I know people have used it. As a short-range option. I'm telling you now, <laughs> it works as a longer range too. And, yeah, predominantly, I use a... Um, I do use the assault rifles as my long range. Stick a 3x on there. You can't go wrong. Um, you do lose out a little bit to snipers, but oh, I'm a rubbish sniper. Although I have got a car class. Got a loadout drop inbound. Uh. Gas is inbound. Marking you safe zone. <laughs> yeah, 
had the same idea as me. Interestingly, I think he flew in. The ghost class. Thought it. I do need to remember I need to get a gas mask so we don't have any issues like we did last time. Is that a bounty? I might put that bounty up actually. Um, so yeah, I think Gcati will be. Um, I think Gcati will be very happy with the way it's gone. Positive ID on the bounty target. Sort them out. Gas is inbound. Um, with Pamak. Obviously, they've been partners for a long while now. I have no idea. What's in there? Enemy UAV overhead. Hmm. We'll see. Um. Yeah. So I think overall, you guys can be happy that they seem to have got enemy launched an advanced UAV. We're exposed. Hmm, how the hell did he know I was there? Oh, well, look at that timing, Jesus. Oh. Um, they, they've made the bike a lot more turnable, um, if that's a word, probably not. Um, but they're able to steer it, um, which has been the kind of downside to Ducatis, to be Just honest. Wait for your turn now, be ready. Oh, I'm going to have to go back there as well, aren't I? To make it out. Um, yeah, around the rest they looked really good, even though Kantaro would have won the race um, quite easily if they didn't have arm pump issues. Uh, you know, they had then the second and third 
best bike there. Um, obviously ended up with the, the top two bikes Listen up, on the day. Win here and you return to the front line. Okay. But if you lose, you're done. Sort them out or capture the objective. Oh. How did he get there so quick? You will want 25 remaining. Learn from the lock. Make it a problem. It's a shame. That was um, a good start there and um, couldn't convert it. Um, so, yeah, they've, they've worked well there. Um, obviously, on the straights of um, Qatar, they were really, really quick. Although, obviously, Vinales won the first race um, and then Catararo won the second. Uh, and Yamaha have been kind of doing what they've been doing, really, um, uh, making life difficult for Ducati. But, you know, from, from of every other bike, you'd say that the Ducati is probably the second best bike out of the lot. Um, some might say that the KTM now probably is the second best, um, looking on recent form. Um, but overall, you know, Bagnai's second in the championship. Uh, Miller's up there, sort of fourth or fifth, I think. So, yeah, it's... Uh, they've, they've, They've got a really good bike now, and they've got a really good base that I think they can flex their bike to whatever circuit they need to, uh, whether it be really fast um, down the straights um, and use that power or just be a little bit more nimble throughout the corners, um, which they're managing to get that balance well. And a lot of it comes from the technological um, advancements that Ducati have made. So yeah, they started the aero revolution off in about 2016. And they've been at the forefront of that, uh, obviously bringing the downwash um, aero uh, from the start of the season, um, looking at gaining some corner speed. Now, whether they have been able to increase the corner speed because of that, I'm not that much of an expert, to be honest. Um, because certainly the experts haven't been talking about that as much. Um, but that doesn't mean that you know, that isn't the case. Um, they've also got the um, front lowering device for starts, but then they've also got the back, which they can use in the races as well, and which they are using in the races. So one of the weirdest kind of things is that they can they can change it. Um, they can change their bike. Uh, they can change the bike uh, kind of in the race to have a lower sort of rear ride height, which then means that they can accelerate faster. Now, the, a lot of the other factories have, in fact, on the inside of Suzuki, that haven't got that rear ride height device. But you can actually seem to be using it better, um, more often, and gaining more from it. Um, which has been really key. You, know, you saw it at Aston going through the last that chicane, and then just how low their in. bike the was compared to everybody else's. Um, just crazy. Just absolutely crazy. Uh, quick. Get. Landing's on marked. Get hmm, ready. Get the sniper out here. It's a bit more of a sniper uh, circle. Um, so, you know, they've obviously got the power in the Ducati V4. They have got the technological advancements. They've got some very good riders as well. Oh, go away. gun really it's kind of important that will do nicely he said and then try and get this while it's quiet or seemingly quiet
So, I think overall, Ducati can be very happy. They've got a They've got a partner in um, Tramac. Look at has been sorty here. I'm assuming that's that guy there. Okay. Whoa! Oh. You know I was there. Wow, okay. Um uh, who are there to help. Um, obviously Zarko is the stand-up former. Jorge Martin though has done a fantastic job. Um, when he was racing, he had that horrific crash at Portugal at Portimao. Um, but yeah, he looks a solid, um, a solid debutant in the MotoGP class. And looks like he's, he's got a lot of potential. So yeah, no, overall I think yeah, Ducati have got to be very happy with the way it's going. Um, the only sort of flying the ointment next, mate, really is that ready. they haven't been towards the front in the last fight, few races. The front line. But if you lose, um, you're done here. It's kind of been KTM and or capture the objective. Yeah. We're sending you back to base. Fort oh, well, we've got a cheater. We've got a cheater. I don't know if you saw that. He was walling. He was walling. He could. He knew where I was. Ah. If you go back on the stream there, um, you could see he knew where I was. So he went kind of to the towards the right, and then he decided to go to the left as I was going to the left. And um, he also hit headshots as well. So, yeah, absolute hacker there, um, which is the downside of playing on these cross-play lobbies, to be honest. Um, to be fair, I haven't seen a huge amount of them. I still get killed probably once or twice a session um, by a hacker. But yeah, yeah, it seems to have got a bit better. Um, but the fact that they can just, uh, you know, there's no anti-cheat is just beyond me in this game. It really is making billions of pounds um, through it, or you know, certainly high millions. Um, so yeah, it's just it's frustrating, really frustrating. Um, so yeah, Jorge Martin's going to be good. He's obviously signed up, and, and the Ducati squad, factory, <coughs> and Pramac are all signed up. Um, they've got Grissini coming in next year, which would be interesting. Um, I mean, it looks a really strong bike. Really, really strong bike. Um, even the you know, Luca Marini and Bezzecchi, um, they've done it all right. But, you know, for uh, having the lowest spec version of Ducatis on the grid, um, being new into Grab MotoGP, yeah, I think they've done through. pretty well. You know, they've been kind of there with thereabouts where we expected them to be. Um, so, yeah, I, I, the, the Ducati seems a really well-balanced bike. Um, they've got the rider line Enemy sorted. Soldier, They're going to be working with you know, Miller, who I, I rate a lot. Um, don't know don't know whether he can be world champion. Um, just based on his... Just based on his kind of riding skill level. Um, I think he's probably got the mentality for it, to be honest. He, you know, he hasn't really been there very many times. So obviously, um, Asin, he did his, you know, in, in what he said was a silly mistake. Um, and then he, he obviously had the start of the season where he wasn't particularly kind of hot on it. But, you know, I, I, I think he's a really solid rider. Um, I think Ragnaya is potentially they're going to be the leading that factory next year. Let's see if we get to... Oh, it doesn't actually know. LZ marked. Prep for jump. Oh, there's no guys at airport, which is annoying. Airport, if you didn't know, was is my favourite drop, either the car park or the complex on the other side as we're looking at it now it's kind of where I know I know the places that people 
on the bar generally uh, and the runs through it uh, and you can get a lot of loot there as well right? I don't think people many people realise the amount of loot that is there Get to work. nice to be able to hear something oh dear okay I don't think anybody else has landed here. I haven't really tried the AM. Is it the AMP pistols? I haven't really tried them yet. Um, I kind of not really sort of needed to. I don't know how good or bad they are. I think you're obviously right. The odd kill when you land on it early on. Oh, I saw somebody there. Jeez. Cat myself. Some down there then. You are quite in the open, I guess would be I guess everybody's sort of thought on that. Thought on why they don't land here. The Mac for a bit more mobility. Head back around. You can even go out here. So this generally this used to be one of my um, regain spots uh, after coming back from the gulag, which I don't think you see me do. <laughs> I don't think you see me do this session. I lost both of them. Yeah, something behind me? I'm not sure. Dead silence always helpful. Um, so yeah, and, you know, the Ducati management, I think would be pretty happy with the way it's gone. Storage town really is my only. I'd like to get a bit more cash and start moving towards the buy. Somebody up here, but I don't know if they're above me. There's certainly nobody up there. It's a bit dodgy as well, to be quite honest. It snapped a little bit. Give him a benefit. 
Um, so yeah, I, I think this the Ducati fans will be it's happy with where they are. They probably wanted. Uh, to be fair, I think they'll be happy. I think they are, yeah, to be where they are. Um, back nine and Zarco You're up there, up next, and Miller very close behind. I think they'd be happy with that. Uh, I think they would be from the Ducati point of view. If you lose, mm -hmm. you're done here. You're up, soldier. Now go sort this fucker out. You're going to be okay. Oh. Oh. That one. We're sending you back to the I will win a gulag. Jesus. They're just not having the luck at the moment. Just everyone seems to be very quick at being able to turn. So, um, so yeah, that's sort of the Ducati. Um, the kind of second easiest, I guess, um, is the Yamaha. Um, so Yamaha, I think, would be incredibly happy with the on the on track performances of Catararo, um and the Monster Yamaha squad. Obviously, Vinales. Has won one as well in, in the initial, um, the first round at Qatar. Um, their bike seems to be, I'd say, the easiest to ride. Although back in, oh, what's the one before Assen, where they really struggled? But it's Saxony, me. It's Saxony, me. Uh, which you'd say that it's, you'd think that that would be quite a Yamaha racetrack really um with all the kind of long corner sweeping corners um on the side of the tire but it just didn't no it just wasn't it wasn't happening at all um for anybody apart from Catararo who was able to kind of make it work um obviously mark marquez was the winner that for that race um but yeah overall at every other track um the Yamaha has worked especially well, especially in, obviously, Qatar's hands, who seems to be riding an absolute crest of the wave, um, leading the World Championship, um, looked immense, um, should have won at Jerez, uh, but had the arm pump issues, which uh, looked like they've been sorted, to be honest. Um, I will get my loadout at some point as well. Um, which oh, looks like they've been they've been sorted. Um, Enemy soldier incoming. Wow, he was rubbish. <laughs> See, that is definitely not aimbot. <laughs> um, and he he probably would have. Got, you know, got a decent haul of points at Catalonia as well. Um, the only reason that uh, he had sort Hello, of his leathers come away um, and, and come open, um, and he had to do, uh, yeah, a kind of on board sort of heroics, really. You know, running, in, running in a GP bike and sort of sorting out your leathers at the same time in a race is um, no small feat, but. It, uh, personally, in my opinion, he should have been black there because if he had backed around an accident with that, it, it, it couldn't have been horrific. Um, so, you know, all jokes aside, personally, I think he should have been, um, he should have been black flagged, but, you know, he did get some points in the end, which is um, good from his point of view. LZ marked. Prep for jump. Um, Vinales is obviously, you know, uh, taken the step to come away from his contract, uh, his factory, the Yamaha contract. Um, we haven't seen the ramifications of that because Rocky's still not kind of come out and said anything about retiring, which I, I who's in most journalists, I've got someone behind me. Nice journalists think will happen. Hmm. But he was going to follow me all the way down, then. Eh? Hmm. Not a fan of this KSP, so I'd want to get rid of that quite Enemy quickly. Enemy launched an advanced UAV. We're exposed. 
Here's up top. And I was right. Um, so you obviously have weeks um, well, gone away from effectively what could be classed as. Oh no, 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 no. Whoa! Um, the best. Bike on the grid. Now, he's quite within his right to disagree with me, because um, let's face it, he's riding the damn thing. Um, where's the money at, by the way? Jeez Louise. Usually there's loads of money here. Somebody's got the load out down there. They may be ghosted. Unlikely, but you never know. Enemy UAV overhead. The floor loop can be pretty good. Someone's definitely been here. And they don't come here well. Friendly loadout drop on the way. There's a sniper here. Say I'm absolutely useless at sniping normally, so um, I'm don't be expecting any crazy shots from me because you won't get them. And the matches with the QBZ just because 
the QBZ is a Ghosted. So I just lost the chat there for a minute and um Now this again is quite a risky play because I know he could have run. Enemy soldier incoming. Hmm, can't see him. Amazing when you just can't see anybody. Um, oh. So yeah, Ketar has, has gone up. Uh, sorry, Pinales has gone away from um, Monty Yamaha. You're in the gulag now. Uh, Fight to earn redeployment. Interesting. Listen up, soldier. Oh, yeah. We're here, and you return to the front line. I think Maverick has underperformed, to be honest. You're up, soldier. Now go sort this fucker out. Oh, told you I wouldn't go in there. Jesus. Um, so yeah, interesting ploy, that. Not quite sure myself. Uh, uh, where is... Just closing in. Position as well. Enemy UAV overhead. Rig and the QBZ, which is not ideal. Oh. 
dealio I wanted some pl plate there. Um. Yes, I'm driving. Where are you? You would have needed to jump. Where did you go? Where did you go? Where the hell did you go? I'll take the wheel. Well, then, um, head off over here with my two kills. Um, Yeah, nothing in your eyes. Hey. Personally, I think we're in the performance for a fair while, to be honest. I'm not surprised. You've got gas inbound. Safe zone relocated. Could go one of these, couldn't I? I've done this, but let's see. Potentially a sitting duck, but it will get me up the hill. Well, that's pretty seamless, to be fair. Um, yeah, I mean, if you know, if I could choose to be on a bike, I'd be on the championship. The one leading the championship. It's not. It's not a difficult decision. Um, now something's happened with Maverick, um, and he doesn't like. Doesn't like that his um, teammate is beating him. Um, but, you know, can't be very pleasing. Um, but yeah, something must have happened for Maverick to want to kind of just jack it in like that. Um, that's kind of like the only point in the ointment, really. Um, I think most people would have expected Rossi to struggle this season. Um, I think... You know, I, I probably would have expected him to s struggle less. But anyone that thought he was going to be pushing on, you know, at the top step of the, the podium, you know, week in, week out. Uh, 
would be, I think, a bit daft. Um, we certainly wouldn't have believed them. Uh, but if it had happened, it'd have been nice. You know, don't get me wrong. Um, I, I, I absolutely love Valentino Rossi. Uh, absolutely love him. Watched him. He kind of brought me into MotoGP, really. You know, he was the top guy. When I first started watching him in 2004. Um, and he has been on that you know, top step a hell of a lot. But he's 42 now. I mean, crying out loud. I can't imagine doing it at my age, you know. I'm starting to I'm starting to kind of fall apart. Um, and I'm 36, so I can't remember. I, just, I think it's amazing what he's done. Um, Gas is closing in. Relocating and I don't zone. think we will have that kind of... Um, that kind of longevity again uh, especially in you know a there's got to be someone down there surely especially in a sport that you know destroys bodies destroys people um yeah i, I just don't i just don't see it happening again i honestly don't there's someone there oh, i thought there'd have been somebody over here but Might be well. Might have made the rotation already. Which I wouldn't be surprised about. I'll be... Hmm, I'll be... Mate, uh, I'll, got see, gas I, moving in. I do my rotations quite early. What is that? Some people wait until the last minute. I don't tend to. Definitely been someone in there. That's fine. It's a very open um, finish. Hmm, I think I've got a gas mask this time. I'm a little bit exposed here, but I'm worried there's going to be somebody in this house. I'm worried there's going to be somebody in that house. Um... Safe zone. I've seen anybody really this game. Gotta go, gotta go. Okay. Trouble is, if he hits me once with that, I'm dead. Come on, leave a plate. Gas is closing in. Leave a plate. Please have left a plate. Dangerous, but I need to. I need to get a plate. Gas 
I'll take the wheel. Sing. Literally didn't sing. For God's sake. Um, yeah, but Bossy, I think they, they would have expected a, a bit more from. Um, but at the end of the day, he's a, he's a bit of a cash cow now. Um, he's got a very loyal following. Um, well, yeah, why would you not keep him? Uh, yeah, I, I can see the. I can see why they did it. Um, hasn't really worked out as much, and I think. Yeah, to be all, you know, in all honesty, I think it's probably not helped their relationship with Morbidelli, um, who's obviously still on the 2019 uh, Yamaha. If you didn't know, um, he, he has mentioned it a couple of times. Um, but I'd be frustrated too in his situation. You know, everybody really has kind of improved. Uh, he's on the 2019 chassis, which is completely different. So he can't have the upgrades that the, the other guys have got. Um, so you know he's kind of stuck with what with what he's got, and he's he's not going to get. He's got the slowest bike on the grid, pretty much, um, on all the speed traps, um, and there's no real way of kind of getting it back. And yeah, just just a frustrating time for Morbidelli. Um, I think the one thing now is that with Vignales moving on to passages new, looks like it's going to be Aprilia, but the fact that that's not been um, announced makes you kind of think. Mm, Maybe, maybe not, um, but we shall see. Uh, Morbidelli should, in my opinion, just just slot straight into the Monster Yamaha um, factory team, um, and then they can fill the Patronus with probably a youngster, probably a, a, a kind of a slightly older. But again, those sort of um, those sort of riders are being set up pretty quickly. Um, so. It's interesting sort of issue that they've got. Um, Yamaha, they have done um, chassis Salt changes. So they've done chassis changes with. Wow. Well, um, chassis changes with um, the beam frame, the, um, the slightly different cutouts. So it looks like a bit stronger. And, you know, in Mighty GP, it's all about feel. Um, Alright, that's enough fucking about. Now we do this for real. Where you would usually, or in a car, you'd want really stiff suspension, um, really stiff springs with a lot of damping. Um, you don't actually want that in about a GP bike or any bike, or any race bike. You need a bit of flex and chassis flex and you need to flex in the right area. Um, and I think that's probably what Yamaha has done. Is, you know, they they need confidence in it and in the chassis to, to work to their advantage because you know, that is historically been where Yamaha Get ready. Have, have had the advantage in the chassis and the corners. Um, they've never really been a horsepower manufacturer. Um, so, yeah, and they've, they've also got the um, ride height um, changing. Uh, devices, so front and now back. Um, they don't seem to use the back as much um, as, say, the Ducati team, but it, it's there and it's working, um, and it obviously does benefit them. But probably some more tweaks they can do to, to kind of do that. Um, and that's it, really. I think overall, Yamaha will be, I think, pleased in one respect, but. You've also got to think that they would be, you know, slightly disappointed that they've had difficulties with Maverick, and he's obviously moved. Enemy soldier incoming! All right, lads, let's get it done. Uh, 
I think they'll be yeah, disappointed that they've had those issues. at least upstairs. UAV overhead. Precision airstrike, take cover! Hmm. Um, yeah, they'll be reasonably happy, but 
they have probably wanted more f from Mavrek and we're disappointed from that point of view. Um, and then, yeah, a quick one about Honda. No way. That's absolute rubbish. <laughs> that was rubbish. Absolute rubbish. That is unbelievable. Um, yeah, just talk about Honda. Um, they've obviously been hampered with Mark Marcos um, being out for the best part of the year. Um, uh, they really didn't have any direction, um, especially kind of last year, but also this line. year. You lose your Paul came over. out and said, well, you know, at the end of the day. You're up, soldier. Now go sort this fucker out. Oh. How did you We're know that? Learn from the law. Failures are proper team. Oh, that was, that was rubbish games. Absolute rubbish games. Um, so yeah, you did have, um, you did have Paul sort of moaning about it, which was uh, interesting, um, but quite good from that point of view because I didn't, you know, some people you kind of think, well, oh, you, you you're not sure they're going to sort of stand up for themselves and sort of really push it. Actually, you know, it's nice to see Paul was was wanting to kind of, yeah, just kind of get in there and change things, really. Um, they have had loads of chassis changes, have had, you know, different people working on different things, and now it does seem to have kind of got everybody working on the same things, but it's going to take a little while for them to to find out the right way um mark obviously won a saxon me um I, I just don't think that that was uh, anything to kind of write home about i think mark is the master of the saxon me um it also sort of fitted his injuries as well so he would have benefited from not having to to kind of push his arm too much on that circuit um, and he's at home with it you know he's just completely at home at that that track and some tracks i think some people you know they people are riders are they they just fit that track whether it be on a you know ducati yamaha honda they can just make it work whatever because it just lies and you now i've raced simulation games before you know i personally love spa um i love alton park um they just fit fit the way i kind of tend to drive um on, on the simulation so you're gonna get that the same in the top levels of motorsport as simple as that um but they do look like they're, they're working on together now um and let's face it honda have got uh, a huge amount of cash to, to chuck at it to make sure that you know they catch up quickly and they're not going to get any concessions because Mark Marquez was on the podium at Saxon Ring um, and I think they'll probably as Mark gets better and more um, his muscles are kind of you know, really sort of developing on the bike um, and he's getting race fit 
obviously he's very fit at, at the moment and he's and he's got some strength in that shoulder but yeah it is a difference in any sport being uh, fit and ready and actually being match fit or race fit it's completely different um and i think you will find him kind of up the bit i i expect mark to now be sort of in top fives um previously i think top tens was kind of where he should have been sort of looking and that's kind of where he got i, I didn't think he was going to come back and you know win races off the bat i think saxon mink you know even though that's a that's a circuit where he really does do well it's still an, a massive achievement that he's been able to come back and, and do that you know don't get me wrong it wasn't never a given um and he looks he looks strong but you know he made it work in a I think 27 lap race, I think it is, um, at Saxon Ring. So, yeah. Honda are struggling. Um, Nakagami has, uh, has had an up and down sort of season, really. Um, he's been really good in warm up, he's been really good in race pace, just hasn't been able to kind of get it at the top end of the, dri- on, um, of the grid. Um, I don't think he is a really great rider i think he's a good rider don't get me wrong um but i don't think he'll get you anything other than a couple of you know podiums that's kind of where i think his level is and similar to cal crutch like yeah you know, as much as i loved cal crutch i thought he was brilliant you know he wasn't a world championship rider he wasn't right at the top end rider he was a very very good right say gp rider but not at those top echelons um uh, but, you know, he, he won races, to be fair to Cal, um, and he won races, you know, where it's a fair and square. Um, and there's not many people that can sort of say they've beat the likes of Mark Marquez, Valentino Rossi, uh, Jorge Lorenzo. Um, so, you know, you can't take anything away from him. So, yeah, Honda, they are struggling. Um, they have got the rear ride height device, but they are moaning about it and, and there's been sort of talk about them saying well is it safe which basically means that their right height device right height device is not working as well as everybody else's right height device so yeah we'll we'll see kind of how that goes i'm not i, I don't think that we might get sort of mark marquez kind of pulling out a few crazy um races and and you know winning a couple um but i don't think they're going to be sort of up in the sort of top um, top step of the podium many times um but i think he will be there or thereabouts and it's going to be interesting to see um how he's getting ready for next year because that that's what this season is for mark marquez it is getting ready and fit and and right for next year um so yeah, that's Honda. Would they be happy with where they are? I don't think they would be. Um, I think they would have expected Paul to have got towards the front quicker. Um, he hasn't really sort of been there. And they've had to wait until Mark Marquez has come back. Um, I think Alex has struggled um, in the LCR team. And I think Nakagami, I think they'll be disappointed there as well. Because I, uh, at the start of the season, I think, I'd have thought that Nakagami should have been around the sort of top five consistently. Um, now, whether he hasn't got the bike for it or he just hasn't got that uh, level uh, within him, who knows? And we'll see over the next few, um, the sort of first few races, I think, because I fully expect them to come with a few sort of changes um, to the to the chassis, things to try for the um, for the riders, um, and they might you know come up with something um, very much like Katie Hamel. Um So that's it for this week. Um, next week, we'll be talking about KTM, Suzuki, Aprilia. Uh, just, yeah, doing exactly the same as here. You know, what, what would they have expected at the start of the season? What they've expected during the season? And would they be happy with where they are now? Uh, and what changes have there been? Obviously, KTM have had some huge changes going from, you know, the last sort of quarter of the grid and finishing races to the um the, to the stop step at the uh, top step of the podium um you know what's kind of created that and um what can they be expected to do at the um in this in this sort of second half of the season 
Um, so that's what I'll be talking about next week. Uh, please like and subscribe if you have enjoyed today. Uh, please pop along. It'd be great to have people in the chat um, just to have some questions and some discussion about what's going on. Um, and yeah, apologies for the uh, poor COD Warzone content, but uh, I hope you're not here for just that. I hope you're here for the war, uh, for the MotoGP talk as well. So hope to see you soon and good day.